Hello and welcome to Live Now, where we are building technology together. My name is Ben Friedman, and today we are continuing in our series of videos on how technology companies are managing with the current COVID-19 crisis. Uh, one way businesses are managing is by employing a lot more remote workers. And one company that is on the forefront of helping people work remotely is Liquidware. We're very lucky today to be joined by Tyler Rohr of Liquidware, the co-founder of Liquidware. Uh, Tyler, thank you so much for joining us. And before we even get started, I just want to say I hope uh, you and your family are safe. How are things up there in Maine? We're actually uh, doing quite well up here in Maine. Thanks for asking, Ben. We had uh, two close family members that, that did get the bug, one in Montreal and one down in New York, but happy to report everyone's on the, uh, the happy side of it. Interesting. So yeah, yeah, that's good to hear. You are uh, a company that specializes in re remote networking, uh, excuse me, remote uh, working. Before we get to mm. some of your solutions and how they can help, what sort of needs are you seeing businesses have? How, how has this uh, COVID-19 situation changed the sort of requirements businesses have for workers? Hmm. It's a great question. And I think one of the ways we look at it is, you know, some of the macro trends that we were seeing come to pass right before COVID-19 hit, you know, and, and how are those kind of following through? And I think one of those, as you hit on, is the work from home or the remote work uh, use case, you know, and, and obviously with everyone being under quarantine, with everyone being under lockdown, you know, most of the large enterprises that, that we work with have had to very rapidly figure out a, a solution to, to kind of address that. And it, and it came in a couple different ways. There's kind of a first functional wave, you know, how do you triage and survive? And then there's kind of the, okay, now we, we know we can at least uh, remain open. What do we do now? And then then obviously some companies, you know, that, that had some uh, pandemic planning or worst case scenario planning are, are looking to capitalize on, uh, on the current situation. So it's a very interesting market, Ben. Yeah, there's definitely been, as you say, a large shift towards uh, this remote working. And uh, that seems to have put a lot of pressure, not only on people, but it's putting a lot of pressure on infrastructure, a lot of pressure on networks. Tell me a little bit about Liquidware and how your solutions help people, especially in a time like now, work from home. That's a great set of questions. And so we kind of focus on what I like to call the three P's, you know, first being the, the people, um, the majority of the folks that we have here at Liquidware have been in server based computing, remote computing, you know, going back to the early days of Citrix, the early days of Microsoft, where, you know, these were kind of esoteric computing models. So the people definitely count. The, the next thing is the products, you know, and here at Liquidware, we make a, a host of software solutions that that enable that. But the third is really the process. And I think this is what I'm most excited about sharing with folks, which is the actual process of looking at where you are today, where you need to get to tomorrow to keep the lights on in your organization, and then obviously how to you know, execute strategically moving forward. And so we start with the notion of an assessment. Really, where are you today? This is something that can be done remotely. It uses very specific instrumentality and goes into you know their computer networks and says what's everyone up to you know and not only that you know what are they using um, on the network what are they using for applications what are they using of that PC that we give them okay let's use that as a basis for what do we do now now that COVID is kind of the new reality hope that made sense yeah totally. Now, VDI solutions uh, have been around for a little while, and perhaps there were some people who maybe have experienced or tried VDI uh, in years past, but uh, I imagine that they've probably come a long way since there. Give me a little bit of sort of the state of the art of VDI sort of solutions and what people can expect as they transition to something like that. Yeah, so VDI or virtual desktop infrastructure really has come up, come a long way. And in the early days, you know, it was almost entirely about that infrastructure, that very specialized, that very expensive, that very complex infrastructure that you had to stitch together to really, you know, deliver the kind of full stack experience for virtual desktop infrastructure to be viable. That was maybe the last seven to 10 years or so, Ben. But if you fast forward to today, what's available now with some of these cloud offerings, a lot of that infrastructure, a lot of that plumbing, a lot of the physics experiments, you know, that used to have to go into creating BDI now go by the wayside. And I think fortunately, I mean, it's just great timing, um, if you can look at it that way, unfortunately, that that some of these cloud offerings, you know, now meet this, this market demand, which is I've got to be able to spin it up quickly. I've got to be able to access it centrally. 
and it's got to be secure and, and kind of universally available. You know, last time I checked, that's pretty much the marketing message for most of the major clouds out there. So we're very hopeful that, you know, this is actually an opportune time for some companies to make advancements. And we know, sadly, some companies won't make it. Right, right. Uh, I'm curious, I'm, you know, I'm an end user myself. I'm, I'm not that technical. Mm. I do know that um, when the transition to the cloud was made, or, or as people are currently transitioning to the cloud, one question a lot of people had was, what do I do when I'm not connected? What do I do when I'm offline? Can I still work? Uh, are there still things that I can use to get uh, uh, the, the job done? Do you find that is a common question with people who are looking at VDI solutions? And if so, what what are the answers to those questions? Yeah, absolutely. Back in 2008, kind of in the early days of VDI, right after we first named it VDI, you know, the first use cases that a lot of enterprises wanted to focus on were users over in India or executives on airplanes. You know, unfortunately, they're the laws of physics, not the suggestions of physics. You know, and so for those reasons, some of those use cases weren't, weren't super exceptional. You fast forward to where we are today. You know, and and you look at you know the the challenge set in really two ways. Number one, will I have connectivity everywhere and at all times moving forward? I think there's some of us that are optimistic that networks are going to get faster and more ubiquitous, and you know, not just at Starbucks, but maybe absolutely everywhere, and that would be nice. But you bring up a great point, which is I still want to go to a beach in Tahiti every now and then, you know, and out there there's no Wi-Fi, and so that kind of fringe use case, or or maybe the network crashes of being able to be functional off network is still that final mile that still needs to be solved. And so there are hybrid approaches today, but that's really one of the exciting frontiers, maybe the next three years, Ben, is how do I truly deliver an online experience when online, offline, you know, I really shouldn't have to make a decision between the two. Right. And of course, another big question folks have is one of uh, security. Uh, there are some companies, there are some industries that uh, don't want to have their data in the cloud or perhaps want to have some sort of a hybrid solution. Uh, when it comes to things like VDI and remote working, is it possible to uh, sort of have a private cloud solution, have centralized servers uh, on a premises? Or, and if so, is that different from sort of current cloud solutions? Give me a quick outline on, on how those might differ? Sure. Uh, it's a great segue into what I consider to be kind of the, the architecture du jour, which will be hybrid, meaning that, you know, there will be use cases, there will be security postures, there will be specific executives or employees that need to have their data, their applications highly available and ultra secure. You know, I think we can think of, you know, Department of Defense use cases or intelligence communities or high value, you know, financial clients or what have you. And so for that reason, you know, on-prem um, adjustable architectures that maybe have the benefit of some of that rich and robust local computing power, and yet the flexibility of some of the cloud services like maybe backup, or you mentioned security. Um, and so I think the the, the new architecture that the majority of the companies that we're working with, these very large enterprises, they anticipate it, they anticipate it being a hybrid future versus having to pick one cloud over another or on-prem versus cloud, if that made much sense. Yeah, and it's definitely good, as you say, to have both options there available or the ability to do both. So, uh, Tyler, since we have you here and you are the uh, co-founder of Liquidware, let me ask you, straight from the horse's mouth, what advice can you give? What tips and tricks perhaps can you give to companies that uh, are maybe anticipating a second wave, another, another lockdown coming after this one is eased up? What things should people look at doing, uh, do you think, to, to prepare themselves adequately for that? Yeah, so I would say that, you know, one of the, the kind of mantras that I've been professing over the last few weeks is, you know, the jump to the cloud isn't that far, but it's a long way down. And mm. so for that reason, you know, we're advising companies to do it at almost using the term cloud staging. And really what cloud staging means is, as we hinted in the beginning, do an assessment to get a great understanding of your current state. What are your users doing today or what were they doing? You know, what do they have provisioned out to them in terms of, of computing and 
application resources. Use that as the basis for some of the strategies you might you know, engage in, whether it's on-prem, cloud, a hybrid model moving forward. But when you figure that out, don't try to boil the ocean as meeting or that first project, you know, take it in stages. So we advise looking at your applications and then maybe looking at your user data, you know, and then maybe looking at the totality of the cloud solution or the endpoint or the thin client, you know, that you're that you're interested in bringing into your enterprise. What we found, Ben, is that by staging the approach, you know, in, in engaging the cloud, it's a lot less daunting, it's a lot less risky, and you have um, basically a, a linear path of success versus a large binary, uh-oh, it didn't work event, which I think everyone wants to avoid. And you bring up another great point. If there is second, third, fourth waves or something else unforeseen in the future, I think a lot of smart companies are going to do the preparing right now, you know, for that eventuality in the future. Yeah, that makes uh, nothing but sense, I think. Um, so last question then, if somebody is interested in learning more about VDI solutions, about liquidware, uh, what's the best way to find more about you guys and what sort of resources do you have for someone who's maybe looking to make that sort of uh, transition or take the first step? Yeah, I'd say the best advice I could give you of learning more about liquidware uh, is www.liquidware.com. But one of the things that I'm advising all of my clients and folks that I interact with every day to do is set up a neat portfolio of Google Alerts. You know, it's really nothing short of astounding how much information is available in terms of you know, work from home success stories, work from home architectures. I actually get a live feed from our uh, team here as well. And I think that just helps us all stay, you know, informed what's collectively available, what are some of the collective best practices. You know, Ben, I jokingly say, we're all writing the book as we're going here. You know, this is untrodden territory. And so, uh, you know, contribute your page and maybe learn what somebody else has written. Tyler Rohr from Liquidware, thank you so much for joining us today. We greatly appreciate your time. But unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. Please remember that this is part of a larger series of COVID-19 videos that we're doing on how technology companies are reacting to the current crisis and situation. Uh, in the meantime, I am Ben Friedman. Uh, this is Live Now, where we are building technology together.